On my previous demonstration, I showed you how we can set up the administrator account, run updates and change the computer name on your Windows Server 2022 Core Edition. In this demonstration, we will install Active Directory Domain Controller. Before we move forward with installing Active Directory Domain Controller, we also need to change few more settings. And one of them going to be the network settings. So to change the network setting, I'm going to select the option number eight because that's what the network setting is listed under. And I'm going to press enter. On this particular server, I have two network interface cards, which are listed here as index one and index two. I'm going to change the IP address of the network interface card one. The reason why I'm doing this because it is my local area network network interface card. And for any Windows Active Directory domain controller installation, it is highly recommended that you use a static IP address as opposed to a DSCP IP address and making sure that to use also a static IP address that is outside your DSCP pool. So I'm going to select option number one, which is going to be the first network interface card and press enter. And as you can see in this particular situation, this network card has the IP address of 192.168.1.29 with the subnet mask 255.255.255.0 statically assigned. And we know that because it shows right here as DSCP enabled as false. In other words, this is not a DSCP IP address, it's a static IP address. It also has a default gateway associated with it, which is 192.168.1.1. But I would like to change this information. So from this list of items, I'm going to select the option number one, which is set network adapter address. And I'm going to press enter. And if they're going to ask whether you're going to set up a DSCP IP address, in that case, you're going to enter D here, or whether you're going to go with the static IP address. That's in situation we're going to select S because I want to create a static IP address, but I just want to change the static IP address to something that I like. I'm going to select the option uh, S in here and we're going to press enter. Now it's going to ask what static IP address we're going to assign. So for me, I'm going to use 192.168.1.4. You can select whatever the IP address you like, as long as it is outside your DSCP pool. So that way that you make sure that you are not going to create a conflict with one of the DSCP devices uh, on your network. And this IP address is not assigned to any other static devices either. So I'm going to select that IP address and I'm going to press enter and it's going to ask for the subnet mask. Now for this particular 192.168.1.4, the subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. But if you have an IP address on a different subnet mask or you don't want to have, a, you have a different configuration, in other words, you can use a different subnet mask by typing it in here as 255 or 255.255.0 or whatever the uh, subnet mask you would like to use. How IP addresses decide what subnet mask to use is a network engineering concept that I have already covered in my CCNA lecture series on my YouTube channel. If you are interested in how subnet mask and IP addresses are de defined and how things like VLSM, which is variable length uh, subnetting works, you can go and check those YouTube videos for greater understanding of how network configurations work. But for now, we're going to use this IP address with this subnet mask and I'm going to press enter. So the next thing they're going to ask is a default gateway. All Windows devices, servers should have a default gateway. And in my situation, I'm going to use 192.168.1.1. If you press enter here without giving a default gateway, a word of caution, these settings may not go through because if the configuration doesn't have a default gateway, the Windows Server Core may reject the information that you have entered above here. So what I'm saying here is if you have a static IP address, if you have already entered the subnet mask, it is important that you also enter the default gateway. For me, it's 192.168.1.1, but for you, it's something else. But if you leave this thing blank, because if you just enter uh, you know, here, just press enter, the, your IP address will not change because it might cause a conflict. So keep that in mind. 
so if you try to leave a default gateway blank, the, the Windows Server Core will reject, uh, you know, your, uh, you know, entry. So for me, it's 192.168.1.1 and I'm going to press enter. So what it's going to do is it's going to reset your um, network card. And in here, if you press enter, what that's going to do, it's going to make sure that it is properly entered and you will exit out of the network configuration settings. If you go back right now, so if you select option number eight and press enter, you will see that your IP address has not changed. The reason for this is that you need to reboot your server or you need to reset the network adapter in order for it to change. So I'm not gonna reboot or do anything like that for now. I'm just gonna keep moving forward with this particular installation. Uh, so the next thing we're gonna do now to change the date and time. The reason why we need to change the date and time, it is important that you are in the right date time zone before you start installing Active Directory Domain Controller because that will remove a lot of headaches and update uh, configurations, etc., etc. I mean, you can change it after you installing Active Directory Domain Controller. It shouldn't have any impact with the modern uh, 2022 server, uh, but it, since the early days, it is always recommended to change date and time. So in this case, we're gonna select the option number nine because that's the date and time option. And this is something really uh, where the, the Windows Server core kind of overlaps with the uh, with the, the GUI version of it because in Windows Server Core, the date and time options, if you op select the nine, will have a graphical user interface. For whatever the reason, Microsoft decided to keep the date and time in the graphical user interface configuration. So right now you can see, you will get a graphical user interface like this when you select the option number nine. And I am in the different time zone than the specific time zone, so I'm gonna change time zone, click there. And I'm gonna select the US Canada mountain time because that's where I am located. If you are in the uh, specific time, US Canada, you can just leave it that way, but I'm not. So I'm gonna select that one or whatever the one that suitable for you from this list. And then I'm gonna make sure that automatically I just clock for daylight saving is checked off. So I don't have to worry about that. I'm gonna click okay. And I'm gonna click okay. So now the date and time is set to where we are uh, as opposed to what the the windows or uh, the you know uh, default date and time again this is something that you can do after the installation of active directory domain controller but however it is recommended that you do it before you in start installing the adds so the next thing i'm going to do uh, is to go into the powershell the reason why we are using PowerShell is that's where we can find the options uh, for updating and installing the Active Directory Domain Controller. So to, in order to install Active Directory Domain Controller, we need to use PowerShell. And in here, to enter PowerShell, we're gonna enter the option number 15 because it's listed here, as I mentioned, it's all coming from this list because we are in the S-Config uh, you know, um, system right now. And we're gonna select enter. We are now in Windows PowerShell. If you want to go back to the sconfig, you can simply type s uh, config config and you can press enter and that will get you back to the sconfig if you want to go back there. So again, we are going back into the PowerShell, but if you want to go back, you simply type sconfig and press enter and it'll get you back into the sconfig mode. To make it easier for you to follow, I'm gonna make this uh, window fit to screen. So I'm gonna press this, so it's full screen. First thing we're gonna do, we need to check the Active Directory modules are here and it is installed on this particular server. To do that, I'm gonna type install dash windows features. As you can see, I press the tab halfway through to complete that command. This is a feature of uh, Windows PowerShell which I will not go into detail here because reason for that is this is not a PowerShell lecture. This is the installation of Active Directory Domain Controller. Uh, but you may see I'm completing some of the sentences uh, by just tabbing uh, and that's how I complete them. So I'm gonna type ad dash domain, uh, so domain dash services.
and I'm going to go and select the option called include management tools and I'm going to put space dash verbose. What that's going to do is that going to make sure that whatever it, the system going to do, it's going to display on the screen and I'm press enter. What that did is go into the system and look for the Active Directory Domain Services modules. And if it is not installed, it's going to go ahead and install it. In my situation, I have already installed the AD domain services. Therefore, it's going to come back as success true and with no feature result information displaying in here. But for you, if it is the, your first time, you will have some information associated under the feature results. What that will do is to install Active Directory Domain Services modules. Now, we have those information, uh, the, those modules installed, but we don't know what commandlet to use. So if you have never used Active Directory Domain Controller uh, or installation um, commandlets, you probably don't know what to do. In that situation, what we can do, we can type get dash command, and then we're gonna put dash module. And the module we are interested in is ADDS deployment, and we're gonna press enter. What that will display is all the available commandlets that you have here that you can use to install your Active Directory domain controller. So we have the install dash ADDS domain commandlet, install dash ADDS domain controller commandlet, install dash ADDS forest commandlets, et cetera, et cetera. Depending on your installation and configuration options, you may select any one of those items or any of the items uh, selected underneath that here as well. For me, because we are installing for the first time, which is the situation for most of you students uh, who are watching this video, if you're installing the first time, what we need to select is the install dash ADDS for us because currently this Windows Server Core does not have an Active Directory installed and does not have any available domain controller which it can connect to. So we are kind of installing a brand new Active Directory domain controller. So we're going to select the option called install dash ADDS for us. So I'm going to type install dash ADDS forest so I can cycle through by tabbing it and I'm going to select that option and press enter so the first question is going to ask is hey we need to have a domain name so this domain name can be anything for me it's going to be sanuja co dot local so that's my domain name but you can select whatever the domain name for your organization or whatever the selected domain name uh, you're going to choose so uh, my for me it's sanuja code so domain name is an arbitrary thing for me it's sanuja.local sanuja code.local i'm going to press enter i'm going to ask for a password this password is your active directory domain controller's main administrative password as well as it's going to be the password for your domain controller's administrator account. So make sure whatever the password you select that you will remember that. So select whatever the password you like and it's going to ask you to confirm your password and I'm going to press enter and then it's going to ask you the uh, a message is going to give you a message saying the target server will be configured as a domain controller and restart when this operation is complete do you want to con uh, continue with this uh, operation so you have the option of selecting yes uh, by just pressing y on it uh, which is also the default if you press enter that's going to be the default or you can select yes to all and the all the other the, the options so for me, I'm just going to select yes to all. Uh, the reason being, I just want to get this thing done as soon as possible. I don't want any prompts to come up and I'm going to press enter. What this will do, this will go ahead and in start installing the Active Directory domain uh, services for us. And this particular core server become a domain controller as a result with the domain name Sanuja Core uh, dot local with the passwords that I have selected. Depending on your computer configuration and server resources, this may take a few minutes. Uh, and, um, you know, once it's done, you will get a prompt message.
as you can see, it is displaying some useful information. In here, it says the new forest, installing new forest, and it is starting to install that information uh, that for us. So that information get displayed at the very top. So you can actually read some of the information here, as well as on the main screen on your uh, Windows Server Core uh, PowerShell uh, as well. So this is the Windows Server Core PowerShell as we entered previously. So you can see some information displayed during the installation process. And some of this information may be useful to you. So make if you think they are useful, make sure you write it down or make sure you remember them. Um, but typically most of them are just uh, warning messages and information. If you get a message that in red, that is not a warning message. That is actually something failed to install. So keep that in mind. Yellow messages are all warning messages those do pop up here and there it may not have an impact on your server installation active directory installation but however if you get a red message that is bad you need to go and check and uh, you know see what went wrong so keep that in mind So the installation has been done. So it, it's going to be restarting your server and it will restart into your domain controller. So we're gonna say close and we have a message saying the operation is successful. So once this reboot is done, you will have an Active Directory domain controller installed on your Windows Server core uh, at this point. So we are in the logging screen now after the installation process is done. So we're going to go in and now you can see at the very top, it says they enter the credentials for Sanuja core slash administrator or hit escape to switch the users or sign in method. In other words, we are now part of a domain called Sanuja core. Remember the Sanuja core dot local domain we created and they're asking for the password that we have created during the installation and configuration of that particular, uh, you know, the domain. So in this case, uh, I'm gonna enter that one. And then when I press enter, I am right now logging into the sconfig of that Sanuja core local domain. Right here, you do see Sanuja core dot local and we are part of the domain. And that's how you install Active Directory Domain Controller on a Windows Server Core 2022. Until next time, make sure to thumbs up this video and subscribe to my channel and have a nice day.